Hey, what is up everyone? It's been really hard to focus these days on anything other than how the coronavirus has completely disrupted everybody's lives. Today I want to chat to you about the need for social distancing, but how that does not mean shutting down communication with everyone. In fact, we need to do the opposite and stay in touch. I'm Risa Morimoto, your host, and you're watching Modern Aging, where we chat about innovative and holistic ways to optimize our health and well-being as we age. Be sure to click on that little red button below that says subscribe on it with the little bell to ensure that you will be notified whenever a new episode is uploaded. You can also sign up onto our email list and get the news of our latest programs on our website at thisismodernaging.com. So rule number one has been social distancing. It's the best way to try to get a hold and control the spreading of this disease, and that is paramount. Some people are self-quarantining now. A lot of people are working from home. This is certainly going to test a lot of marriages and relationships with everyone in closed, confined spaces just spending this much time together for an indefinite amount of time. I mean, even my husband and I have been joking that we haven't seen this much of each other in years. But this also means that a lot of people will be isolated and that's going to cause a lot of other issues, namely social isolation, depression, anxiety, to name a few. Yeah, it's not good. So while social distancing is necessary right now, it doesn't mean not communicating. So in fact, this is a great opportunity to come together as a community, your neighborhood, your small local community. And though we can't physically hang out with one another right now, there are things that we can do to support one another. This doesn't have to be the Hunger Games where people are killing each other over rolls of toilet paper. It's ridiculous. We need to rise above this. So here are just a few tips that you can do to stay connected. Number one, check in on your neighbors and family and friends, especially the elderly and those who are at high risk or have chronic issues. You can email them, call them, Skype them. Just make sure that they have everything they need. If they need someone to help them with their shopping, offer to do so. You can leave it on their front door or front stoop, you know, help them take out the garbage, whatever it may be. Make them know that they are not alone and that we're in this all together. Number two, meals over FaceTime or Skype. If you're single or not even if you're not even single, call a friend, relative, especially if they're alone and have a meal or snack with them over Skype or FaceTime. Actually, my husband and I just did this last night with a friend and it was fun. We hadn't talked in a long time, so it was great to catch up. The meal should actually be long, should be long enough so that hopefully you'll talk about other things than just the coronavirus. You should talk about things that are uplifting and fun too and throw in some gossip in there too because we could all use some juicy gossip right about now. Number three, watch a movie or TV together remotely. FaceTime or Skype, watch a movie or TV together because why not? If you are together, then at least you can make your snarky comments to each other instead of yelling at the TV by yourself. Number four, join or host a virtual book club. If you can't get together physically, then create a Google Hangout group or host a book club there. It's important to try to retain a sense of normalcy where and when you can. It's a great way to stay connected and engaged in reading. Number five, exercise together. If you're one of those people who needs someone to motivate you, then you need to book some time and call or Skype with your friend, neighbor, or workout partner. Though it's not a good time to go to the gym right now, you can both work out on, you know, to a YouTube video together. Call a friend while you're both going for a walk. You can catch up and get some much needed physical activity. You can go outside. I mean, somehow I feel like we're all supposed to stay cooped up in our homes. And I, but I actually think it's good for you to go outside and get some fresh air. That is, if you're not at risk and you don't go near people. So staying active and moving around is critical to your health. It's as important as eating healthy, so make sure you're getting some movement in every single day. If you can do it with a friend who's in the same boat as you, it'll just make it more fun. Number six, craving to see some art? Well, how about checking out a virtual tour of some of the greatest museums from around the world? The Louvre, the Met, the Guggenheim, all these amazing museums have virtual tours on their sites. You just Google virtual tour of museums and it comes up with this amazing list. You can share your experience with a friend or perhaps just do it together and you can share your screen. So these are extraordinary circumstances under extraordinary times. Yes, and it sucks. But there are plenty of things we can be grateful for each and every single day. There are many life lessons to be learned. We will persevere and in the meantime, call a friend or neighbor. I'm sure they're going to be so happy to hear from you. If you know someone who could benefit by watching this video, please share it with them. 
I'd love to hear if you have other ideas on how to stay connected during this time. And if you do, please write them in the, section, in the comments section below. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red button below and the little bell so you'll be notified whenever a new episode is uploaded. Thank you so much for watching. Stay calm, stay connected, wash your hands, and we'll see you next time on Modern Aging. Thank you.